the humanities have got a new piece of life, sociology, anthropology, and other areas of research that might have not you know, been looked upon as scientific in the past. I mean, to understand these social networks out there, not only do you need to be scientific, but it does seem, seem to me anyways that you need to be a psychologist, a sociologist, possibly an anthropologist as well. You need to be sort of like a mixture of everything and not just have one view on things. What's your take on that? Well, um, I think I think that's very right, and I think um, kind of a hot field of study in the next 10, 20 years is going to be this field called mathematical sociology, because that takes kind of the soft side and the hard side and mixes it together, and 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 actually social network analysis is a is a is a subset of that. And I have this friend of mine who's who who is a sociologist, and when he introduces himself and when he talks about what he does. He says, well, this isn't rocket science, it's harder. And so um, it's, it is. And, and in many ways, you know, in, in physics and chemistry and biology, we know, you know certain things put together will react a certain way and will give us certain results. And that's not always true with, with human behavior and human interactivity. And, and so uh, it's a much fuzzier area, and it's an it's a area that doesn't have as many clear answers. And it's an area where we need to be very, very good at, at seeing patterns and at understanding patterns. And that takes a much more complex way of thinking than maybe just doing math formulas. But it would seem as well the analysis of these social networks and even you know, viewing social networks objectively involves a lot of common sense. Right. And I'll tell you, um, the best way to do social network analysis is not for a consultant like me to analyze the data on my own, run these various network maps, put it together in a report, and then just dump it on the client's desk. I find that the best way to analyze the networks is to do that ahead of time, but then to go in and discuss with the client and his or her staff about what's going on. Because I bring certain knowledge about networks and organizations and network analysis to the table, but I'm not an expert of what it's like to work in that organization. But those people are. They're there every day. And so both of us coming together and combining our knowledge and having a conversation and doing sense making about it, I think is the best way to analyze what's going on. Because I can bring one map to, to IBM and show them, and they might say, yeah, that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. And I can bring a very similar looking map to, um, to the Ford Motor Company, and they'll look at it and they'll say, oh, no, that's not what we want to be look doing, and that's not what we want to be looking like. So each company has their own way that, that they want to do business, that they want to get things done. And so there's no right answer from these network maps. There's not like one network map that I could show to anybody and that would be the best way that they could be. Because some people want to be more more vertically oriented, some want to be more horizontally oriented, some want to be more vertically and horizontally and diagonally oriented and it depends on what they're doing, what part of the business they're in, and also what part of the organization chart they're in. You have much different networks at the top of the hierarchy than you do in the middle than you do at the bottom. The graphs you had on show yesterday on slides, the social analysis graphs, there must be a big danger if these were to be interpreted in the wrong way. I mean, what would be the implications of that? I mean, surely they would be very serious indeed. So you would need to be extremely careful. Right, and that's, that's one of the roles that I play as a consultant when I work with my clients, and that's to what I call keep them out of the weeds. And um, because what, what, what can happen is, and, and I've seen this before, I've seen this probably hundreds of times before. If I had a dollar for every time I'd see it, I'd be a very rich man. Uh, where, we, where we show a map and somebody is showing out on the edge of the map. They're not that connected. Or they're showing disconnected completely. And the first reaction of everybody in the room is, oh, that person's not important, let's get rid of them. Or you'll see another map where somebody's densely connected in the middle of the network 
and um, with lots of lines going to them and all that, and, and everybody looks at that and says, oh, that person's very important, you know, we need to give that person a promotion. And what, in fact, might be happening is that the person in the first graph, the first network, might be disconnected be, or might be loosely connected because that's a map of something that he or she is not deeply involved in. So for instance, um, this actually happened with a project that I did um, with, with my own or organization, again at TRW. We had a map that showed my boss very loosely connected to this one, this one network. And people looked at that and they said, wow, why is the boss of this department so loosely connected? Well, the reason was, and it was the right reason, he was loosely connected because what we had mapped out were the administrative day-to-day -day user support functions that he as a director of the department should not be getting involved in. We had a user support staff that did that and they were the ones that were tightly connected to each other and to outside customers and he was only connected because once in a while he got an exception or, a, or an extremely rare case. Yet when we looked at a map of our department planning strategy and planning on what products and services we would offer to the rest of the organization, he was in the thick of things. So, so there, you know, somebody just looking at the first map or said, ah, fire the guy. Looking at the second map or said, ah, that looks like a boss who's in the right place. So you have to, again, be aware of the context. And, and as, as a consultant, that's one of the um, things that we have to be real good at to, to guide our clients through this analysis and don't let them you know, veer off to the right or to the left and, and, and make a mistake in interpreting. Okay. Valdis, thank you very much for your time today. It's greatly appreciated. Well, thank Enjoy you. Enjoy the rest of your stay in I will.